My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. Hello, you are welcome to episode number 84 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. Episode number 84. Remember, we've treated electric cells and we've treated current electricity. In this episode, we shall be looking at past and likely questions when it comes to cells and current electricity generally. Trust me, you are going to benefit a lot from this class. Without wasting much time, let's look at the first question I have here from the Flash Learners Jam application. Visit flashlearners.com to install one for yourself or your phone, desktop, or any device that you have. You are not going to regret it. If you ask me a simple question, how do I pass jam? I'll just give you two answers. One, get the Flash Learners Jam app. Two, follow the Flash Learners video series. With that, you are good to go. If you've been following the series, you know that there is no textbook you bring and read that will contain all the details in these videos. In fact, there is no three textbook you can combine that will give you the details I give in my videos. I am not bragging. You can check that out. So you don't even need textbooks. You don't need external lectures. The videos, the app, you are good to go. Now take a look at this very, very interesting statement. From the circuit, you see that there is a current source or there is current flow, uh, current ammeter for measuring current and there is part for potential difference. You see the voltage. Then there is resistance. So this is a circuit with resistor, voltage, and current is meant to flow towards the resistor. And look at one thing in this circuit. It is an open circuit. For an open circuit, current is not flowing. And EMF is equals potential difference. But that is not the point. What are they trying to ask us? They said, in the diagram above, what would happen to the current I if another resistor, R2, is connected in parallel to it? Now, we have just one resistor, either like this, R1, or you draw it exactly the way they put it there, R1. They said, if this is not the case, they say another resistor is connected in parallel with the already existing resistor. Meaning in the circuit, where there is resistor, something like this happens. This is parallel. If they had said that another resistor is connected to it in series, series would be something like this. Like this. Like this. So here would have been arrow 1, here would have been arrow 2. So here is arrow 1, here is arrow 2. And current is flowing this way. Now look at it. When it comes to the flow of current, for resistors in series, the same current will flow. For series, same current will flow. For resistors in series. Now, for parallel arrangement, the same current will not flow because immediately the current uh, gets here, it will split. Some will flow towards this resistor, some will flow towards this resistor. Let's assume values for these two cases. If it were in series, let's say let the resistors be 2 ohm. In series, let's say R1 is 2 ohm, R2 equals 2 ohm. If you are solving for resistors in series, the equivalent resistance is equals R1 plus R2. In summary, for series, just add the value of the resistor, you get the equivalent resistance. So that will be 2 ohms plus 2 ohms. It will give you 4 ohms. How about in parallel? Solving for resistors in parallel, the formula is 1 over total resistance, or you say equivalent resistance, is equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. If you have more, plus 1 over R3, like that, like that. For resistors, if you have more, just be adding and adding. Now, in this parallel case, let's call here 2 ohms as well. 
And let's go here. Two volts. Let's solve this. The equivalent resistance will be 1 over RO equivalent will be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. This will simply give you LCM is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So here is like 2 over 2 is equals 1 volt. If you are given two resistors in parallel, the easiest way to get the equivalent resistance, just say RO equivalent is equals RO1 times RO2 over RO1 plus RO2. Which means you multiply them and you add. If you are doing it this way, you have RO1 is 2, RO2 is 2. So 2 times 2 over RO1 is 2 plus RO2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. If you are using this way or that way, anyone that is convenient for you. But look at something that we notice. For resistors in series, the total resistance will increase or the equivalent resistance will increase. But in parallel, the equivalent resistance is lower than individual resistance. You see, we have 2 ohms and 2 ohms in parallel, but the total resistance or equivalent resistance we are getting is, okay, pardon, 1 over equivalent resistance is equals 2 over 2. So when you invert, you are still going to get the same thing. Don't miss this. Anyway, we'll solve more questions on the resistors. You've seen for yourself once again that for resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is usually lesser than the individual resistance. So what do you think is going to happen? If you, let's look at the question again. If another resistance is, con what would happen to the current? So V is equals I R. The current is voltage over resistance. Current is inversely proportional to resistance, which means as resistance increase, current will drop. As resistance drop, current will increase. So since in parallel, resistance is reducing, current will therefore increase. That makes option C the correct option. The current will increase because the effective resistance will decrease as simple as ABC. The next question says, in the diagram above, the value of V1 and V2 are dash. The value of V1 and V2 are dash. The beauty of these questions and answers session is that if you increase your knowledge when it comes to DC circuits. If you look at this circuit very well, you will see the DC source like this. You see 2V, 1 ohm. From here alone, what does it tell you? 2V, 1 ohm. This is the DC source. This is like the battery. 2V, 1 ohm. It simply means that this voltage, I told you that the voltage from the battery is basically the EMF. So this is the EMF is equals 2 volts. Now look at something else. This 1 ohm resistance is inside the battery. And I said that the opposition to the flow of current inside the battery is referred to as internal resistance. So this here is the internal resistance. That is 1 ohm, some more arrow. So the resistor you are seeing, 3 ohms and 2 ohms in the circuit, they are the external resistance or the terminal resistance or the resistance normally. Now what do you think will happen? Listen carefully. These resistors are connected in series. For series connection, the same current will flow. On it. Working on that. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. So annoying. Please try again Stop in a talk. moment. Could I ask, did I ask you anything? <clears throat> For series connection, the same current will flow. Now, but 
different voltage. For parallel arrangements, the voltage flowing in each of them will be the same, but current will be different. For series, the same current will flow, but the voltage will be different. Take note of that. That simply means in this circuit, the, the current that is flowing in the 3 ohm resistor is the same thing as the current that is flowing in the 2 ohm resistor. But the problem here is that the voltage will be different. So the voltage in the 3 ohm resistor is V1, and the voltage in the 2 ohm resistor, they say let's call it V2. So what is the value of each of these? When you have something like this, the first step is to identify what you are given. We know our EMF to be 2 ohms. We know our internal resistance to be 1 ohm. Step 2. Find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So let's resolve 3 ohms and 2 ohms in series. The equivalent resistance or the total resistance will be 3 ohms plus 2 ohms. And that will give you 5 ohms. So we've gotten our resistance. Now, remember the formula why I was treating EMF. Mm, okay, let me be writing them out. I told you that EMF is equals V plus I arrow or I arrow plus I arrow or I arrow plus arrow. This is EMF, electromotive force, electrical pressure. From here, we have EMF, we have resistance, equivalent resistance to be 5 ohms, we have internal resistance to be 1 ohm, which means we can calculate current. Why is it that we can use this current? We can use this current because for a series arrangement, the same current is flowing through both of them. So no special solving for current, but there will be special solving for voltage. Now, having this, EMF is 2. So 2 is equals current times resistance equivalent is 5 plus internal resistance is 1. So this will give you 2 is equals 6i. Making i a subject formula, i is equals 2 over 6. I think this will give you 1 over 3. So 2 over 6 is 1 over 3. Am I correct? Six, yes, 1 over 3. So 1 over 3 is your current. So now that we have the current, we can solve for the voltage passing through each of the resistance. V is equals I R. So V1 will be I times R1. V2 will be I times R2. R2 is the second resistor. R1 is the first resistor. So the voltage in the first resistor is current times resistance in the first resistor. Why did we not say I1? We did not say I1 because for series, the same current will flow in both of them. So the current remains. For to find voltage in the second resistor, we simply say the V2, that the second voltage is current and the second resistance. So for the first case, this is equals current is 1 over 3 times R1. What is R1 times 3? So this will give you 1 volt. For here, this is current 1 over 3 times R2 times 2. This will give you 2 over 3 volts. So the answer will say definitely be what now? 1 volt and 2 over 3 volts. 1 volt, 2 over 3 volts. That is option C. If my eyes are still working very, very well. So let's look at this. This is an interesting question as well. We are going to like this particular one. It says, four resistors of resistance, 3 ohms, 8 ohms, 12 ohms, and 4 ohms are connected in parallel. Calculate the value of the combined resistance. If they have told us that these resistors are connected in series, what we we'll simply have done is to add everything. But it's in parallel. So for parallel, 
1 over the total resistance or equivalent resistance is 1 over the first resistance plus 1 over the second plus 1 over the third plus 1 over the fourth. So since you have 4, we stop at 4. So 1 over total resistance or equivalent is 1 over 3, which is the first one, plus 1 over 8, plus 1 over, what is that? 12, plus 1 over 4 ohms. 4 ohms. The LCM is 24. So 1 over equivalent resistance is, this is 24. 24 divided by 3 times 1 is 8, plus 24 divided by 8 times 1, that is 3, plus 24 divided by 12 times 1, that is 2, because 24 divided by 12 is uh, 2 times 1, 2, plus 24 divided by 4 times 1, that should give you 6, plus 6. So 1 over equivalent resistance will simply be 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6, 10, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's 19 over 24. Look at this. We are not looking for 1 over arrow. We are looking for arrow. So to get arrow, we cross multiply. Arrow equivalent times 19 is equals 1 times 24. So arrow equivalent will therefore be 24 over 19. And 24 over 19 should give you 1.26 ohms as seen in option D. So that is basically your answer. And this brings us to the end of this episode. See you in the next episode where we shall continue solving.